1939 to 1945, the deadliest and most destructive time in human history. Seven years reportedly claimed the lives of more than 50 million people. And while many know the numbers, what many don't know are the gruesome details behind these numbers. The Soviet army, which was on the victorious side, it was called the Red Army. But they were also responsible for the rape and murder of more than 100,000 women as per medical reports and as per abortion-based data. Such horrific details are never mentioned in history. Either they go unnoticed or they're buried into the history books that were never written. Because the winners always write the history books. Even after the war, the most powerful countries on both sides of the war didn't quit. And in this quest for power, many would have possibly forgotten how to draw the line. Humans were being massacred, but it all looked very minuscule to the people who were in positions of power back then. Welcome to a new series on beer biceps where we deep dive into the horrors committed by human beings on each other and find out exactly how far we can go before we decide to stop as the human race. This is the supposedly true but widely denied story of MK Ultra. America, is this the greatest form of suffering that your government put on your people? This is the story of MK Ultra, a concept that might have been hidden from you up till this point. August 30th, 1949, it wasn't a great day. As the sun rose on the United States, Americans found out that the main ideological and geopolitical rival, the USSR, now had an atom bomb. 29th August 1949, the Soviet Union conducted its first nuclear test, codenamed RDS-1, in modern-day Kazakhstan. Until then, only the US had such a weapon of mass destruction. It wasn't only that America's biggest enemy had an atom bomb, but it was about how they got it. It wasn't a coincidence that the Russian RDS-1 device bore a close resemblance to the US Fat Man bomb dropped on Nagasaki. Note down these names. Ulrich Ames, a CIA operative for over 31 years who was later found out to be a KGB mole. Robert Lee Johnson, an American sergeant that joined the KGB. And David Greenglass, an atomic spy specialist who worked in both the US atomic bomb projects. Eight such spies that worked in the US nuclear testing leaked the details of the atom bombs to the Soviet Union. This incident was believed to have planted the seed of the Cold War. But more importantly, it gave birth to some events that would forever change the definition of the word torture. Once the US got to know about the Russian spies, it decided that it's now time for revenge. The US now wanted to have their own spies in Russia executing government-sponsored operations. But not just any spies. Author and historian Tom O'Neill says that they wanted robotic human spies whose minds they could control. They wanted to make assassins that would massacre hundreds of people on order against their conscience and then forget about the whole incident and move on to mass murder the next lot. And to do exactly this, 
CIA sponsored a secret program project MK Ultra This program was developed in order to see if the government could control people's minds through drugs electrocution hypnosis and induced pain the induced patients in government hospitals with LSD without their knowledge and later hypnotize them under the influence of LSD on the night of the 4th of July 1954 the city of San Antonio in Texas was shaken by the rape and murder of a 3 year old the victim Three year old girl Cher Jo Horton had disappeared around midnight outside the Texas Air Force base. Her parents had left her and her brother in a parking lot outside a bar. They were playing outside while the parents were having dinner inside. But when the parents came out, the girl was missing. They searched for hours. They asked everyone around them in a state of panic but there was no sign of this girl. After 3 hours they discovered a car parked next to a gravel pit. But what they saw there is something you can't even imagine. Shares underwear was hanging from one of the car's doors. On investigating further, the parents found the girl's dead body in the mud nearby. Her neck was broken. Her legs had been torn open. They were bleeding. They discovered that she had been brutally raped. A man wandered out of the darkness. He was shirtless, covered in blood, covered in scratches. He didn't seem drunk, but he couldn't say where he was. He couldn't explain how he had gotten there. He couldn't explain whose blood was all over him. He didn't even make any attempts to run away. He just stood there very calm. Very composed. What's going on here? The man asked. He was then taken to the police station nearby. Bystanders described him as dazed and in a trance-like state. This man, accused of these horrible crimes, was Jimmy Shaver, an airman at the nearby Air Force base. He had no criminal record, and he claimed to have lost his memory. and denied that this incident even happened what the fuck had just happened jimmy shaver had a history of terrible migraines his condition got extremely severe once severe enough that the air force had recommended him for a 2 year experimental program in a nearby government hospital and as it turns out MK Ultra project thrived on drugging government hospital patients with their knowledge, knowledge. and then hypnotized them. As she was slowly started to remember the events of that night, he confessed to killing Shay Horton. He said that the 3-year-old girl brought out repressed memories of his cousin Beth, who had sexually abused him when he was a child. The night that Shay was drugged, he said he had visions of God. who whispered into his ear to seek out and kill the evil girl and after all this very conveniently there was no record of shiva taking part in any experimental program this was just the beginning of the mass experiments that the cia would conduct they knew that lsd and hypnosis can make people do things that they're not willing to do So what would the natural next step be? Capturing enemy spies, inducing them with LSD, torturing them and forcing them to share secrets that they would otherwise not share. These experiments supposedly got darker with time. To test this theory, Sidney Gottlieb, the chief scientist of the MK Ultra program, was reported to have started a huge brothel. Gottlieb and the lead doctor of the experiment George White rented out a huge apartment with shiny mirrors with fancy lights equipped with the most fascinating sex toys 
The operator decorated the walls with exotic prints, photos of can-can dancers and images of women in bondage and BDSM scenarios. To complete the setup, he installed two-way mirrors for agents to sit behind, to watch and to enjoy. He wanted the spot to have a French whorehouse look. Women from different prisons were forced to become prostitutes in this brothel. Gottlieb knew what he was doing was illegal. Hence, there was no paper trail of the payments made to these prostitutes. He wrote in a letter, due to the highly unorthodox nature of these activities and the considerable risk incurred by these individuals, it's impossible to require that they provide a receipt for these payments or that they indicate the precise manner in which funds were spent. Sometimes these women weren't even paid. They were just given chits that they could use to get out of jail. After setting up the brothel and a prostitution racket, it was time to administer LSD to random civilians. Just to test out their theory. Just with the hope that they'd find a secret Russian spy amongst common American folk. These women were ordered to go to bars and pubs and look out for common folk. Someone who's middle-aged, someone sitting alone in a corner with a drink, someone that looked lonely. These prostitutes then approached these men, chatted them up and bought LSD spike drinks for them. Then the women would proceed to have sex with them in front of this creepy spy mirror. The officials would watch the whole act sitting on the other side of the mirror. Post-sex, they would attempt to obtain random secrets from the men or sometimes attempt to give them subliminal messages to commit crimes ranging from assault to assassination. All the CIA officials would brutally rape the women of this brothel whenever they wanted. They had created a power differential, not giving them money, not giving them the appropriate kind of hospitalization required for the injuries that they caused. A CIA official there wrote about this experience in a letter. Where else could a red-blooded American boy lie, kill, cheat, stake rape, and pillage with the sanctions and blessings of the almighty government? Pretty good stuff, brother. The most central agency of the biggest superpower in the world, the CIA, was sponsoring experiments that included torture, rape, and crime. Scientists and doctors of this experiment started feeling like they had the whole world under their control. The scientists now started to feel like gods, playing with people's bodies and minds in this manner. So they began to dose random subjects with hallucinogens and study the effects of this experiment. That's strangers out in the public, going about their day, unaware that they were about to be hit with a powerful dose of a hallucinogen. In one such bad incident, Sidney Gottlieb dosed his colleague, Frank Olson, without his consent. Spiking a glass of his alcohol with LSD. Nine days later, Olson jumped to his death out of the 10th floor of the Statler Hotel in Manhattan. It's said that he was suffering from severe psychosis and delusion. Even then, Gottlieb didn't stop. Seeing his friend and colleague die before his eyes, he just wanted more. He wanted to try this on even more people. His sadism grew as time went on. They were in search for new crowds, people who were easy to target and were present all together at the same time. That's why one such event caught their attention. 1969, the Woodstock Music Festival. Attended by more than 400,000 people, it became the new target for the CIA and the so-called acid tests. Many government-sponsored groups and undercover agents attended the festival. The biggest of pop stars were performing at the festival and the CIA distributed LSD through these stars. Who 
could say no to anything if their favorite pop star asked them for it. This led to an even bigger mass dissemination of LSD. Thousands of people overdosed on this drug and were seen lying around like they were almost dead. Helpless, unconscious, and waiting for someone to save them from themselves. Of course, LSD doesn't always cause harm. But who knows if the MK Ultra project was responsible for adding something along with the LSD. Making the experience much more than what LSD is meant to do. It wasn't the goal of the CIA, but because of this event, the infamous hippie culture was started. In the following 10 years after this incident, at least 25% of Americans were using LSD on some level. Could this have been some sort of a governmental strategy to make the use of psychedelics widespread, to see what psychedelics do on a mass scale? The horrors of this torture were not just limited to America, though. A part of the project was even being carried out at the Allen Memorial Institute in Canada. So according to the Canadian government, approximately 80 patients in the Allen Memorial Institute underwent depatterning. The treatment involved putting patients into a prolonged period of sleep for several days to the administration of a cocktail of drugs. Once they were asleep, once they were in a coma, the patients were given high voltage electrical shocks. Electroshock therapy, they called it. Sometimes, for weeks at a stretch. These patients didn't sign up for this. They were brought in in the name of treating schizophrenia. And without their knowledge, they were forcefully pushed into a coma. Their bodies were tormented due to these shocks, shaking relentlessly after each shock. It was almost like their souls wanted to leave their body due to the immense pain that their minds were going through. And after all these horrific acts, maybe MKUltra was successful. Maybe they were able to make some sort of a human that would forget all of its own heinous crimes because in 1965, a paper was published, The Dangers of Hypnosis, which cited a double murder by a hypno-programmed human being. The shocking thing about this double murder was that it wasn't committed anywhere near the US, but in Copenhagen, in Denmark. Kind of makes us think, was this experiment going on only in North America? Or did it find its way to the rest of the world? The 60s was a time where, from a geopolitical perspective, Europe served as a stronghold for America. It was MKUltra operating on a worldwide scale? Maybe there's something deeper that we can't see. And unfortunately, maybe we'll never know. This project has supposedly ruined the lives of hundreds of households. But what happened to the government officials that sponsored the CIA to carry this out? Nine justices of the Supreme Court of the US agreed that the Congress gave the CIA the powers to carry out these unethical procedures. But even then, no one involved in this heinous process was ever punished. This shows us what people in power are capable of and what people in power are able to get away with. It also makes one question what people in power have been hiding from us. The intention with creating dark blood is not to make you uncomfortable, but it's to share real, modern human history with all of you so that you know the true nature of our world, so that you know that there's many truths hidden from you and your history books.